But he has been a lot quieter today after uh, after this one for seven in the playoffs right now. Now Luke Scrub Hodson steps to the plate, takes a first pitch, and Ooh. drills a line drive into left field for a base hit. So that's a good start for the Gentlemen's Club. That is their first hit aside from Court Knobloch's absolutely crushed home run. And that will bring up Becca. And she's going to hit a little liner right over Double play. to second base, taken over to first. And that was a base running mistake by Luke Scrub Hodson as he is doubled off. And that's going to be lined right to shortstop. So another quick inning for Gentlemen's Club. And we're going to be getting back to the bottom of the inning for Shaq Daddy as it looks like they're starting to find their groove after a bit of a struggle early on, some fielding miscues. Now they're, they're going good. All right, here comes Lucy right now. I actually haven't seen much tape on her. I don't think uh, we have much info on her at all either. Bottom of the lineup, Lucy, we're trying to see if we have any information. I have absolutely nothing. Although I did find the info about Hannah, so I'll, I'll get that to you on our next, her next step as the first pitch bounces in front of home plate, but the umpire calls it strike one. It's a good eye. That's a good eye, though. I mean, looks looks pretty low. Oh, one count to Lucy now. She swings at the next pitch. That's going to be fouled off. Strike two. And the pressure is on. I mean, she was swinging for the, the Now, the question right is, who has more pressure? Is it the pitcher or the batter? Because if you're the pitcher, you, the last thing you want to do is strike out your own teammate. Right, Robbie? I completely agree. That's and the you worst know how in the that feels. I know exactly how that feels. And she's going to hit a little two-hopper over to short. Nice play toss to first. Four out, number one. And we're coming back to the top of the batting order as Kai Hoyt steps to the plate. He singled in his first at bat. He steps up and drills a base hit into left field once again. He's going to try to go for two, and he's going to make it just barely. Wow. I feel like you got to get down and slide on that one, right? We'll call that a double, even though it looked like there was some fumbling on it over in left field. We're, we're going to be generous here. Foss Field not in the best of shape, so give the benefit of the doubt to the fielders. Where is Alan Bell playing right now? He just... Shane Gutierrez steps back up and hits the first one. A little soft pop-up over to second base. Bobbled and almost dropped, but then barehanded for the out. Oh, man. Here Gutierrez comes. now 0 for 2. And now Caitlin steps to the plate once again. And you can hear the boos raining down from her opposing team out in the field. Just unleashing a tirade of heckles right here. You almost worry for her safety as she pops that one up foul down the left field line. As a commissioner of this league, I, I am a little bit worried about this. You know, you might need to set some ground rules next year for trading players midseason and their eligibility for championship games. She seems to just shake it off and step back in like the two-sport star that she is. I don't know how I'll go by the league office on that one. Well, that really says bad things about how much attention you pay to your league, Robbie. Next pitch, and she drills that one again, but still way ahead of it. Big run, not quite there in time for Jordan Curly Fry Patterson. I feel like Jordan's going to lay out on that one. This is the last game of IMs. All or nothing at this point, right? All or nothing right here as Caitlin Smith is back 0-2 in the count. Here in the top of the third, or excuse me, the bottom of the third. And the 0-2 delivery, and she's going to line that one into left center field. Allen makes the catch, and that's out number three. It's out number three. And we will go to the top of the fourth inning. Still 2-1 for all the power we've seen from each of these teams. Fairly low scoring affair. Of course, all three, all three runs scored via the home run. One of them inside the park for the Gentlemen's Club and a pair of home runs sailing all the way over the track out there. And now is a dangerous time. We have a pedestrian out there walking that track. I hope that he stays safe. 
as Gentleman's Club steps to the plate. We have Alex Tuman leading off, and he oh, drills yeah. that one into left field, but not quite far enough. He was going for the pedestrian. That's true. That was He was aiming for him, almost hit him, not quite enough, but a nice catch out there for out number one. And that brings up Amanda Hall. Uh, she, she's she got a very good stroke here. Watch watch this. She had a couple big hits in the last game. Amanda Bambino Hall. She takes that first pitch, bounces next to home plate. Strike one. You know, I like this girl. I think she's a big-time Red Sox fan. So, automatically, that's points in my book. And she's going to hit a little soft ground. Or it's kind of ironic that she's nicknamed the Bambino as Arvid fields that one cleanly for out number two. Now, Court Knobloch steps to the plate. Court, big cheese, Knobloch takes first pitch, strike one. He hits with so much power that during his stint in the England Premier League, he led the league in home runs and doubles four years in a row. He swings at that one, going for the power stroke right there, fouls it off, and now Jordan Patterson with the pressure on as he could strike out his own teammate right here. 0-2 pitch, and he's getting an opposite field line drive, bounces right in front of the second baseman, fumbles it, Fires to first, and Caitlin Smith with the defensive miscue lets it get away. That will let the runner advance. The error is going to go on the second baseman because it was a terrible throw. But you have to wonder if Caitlin Smith would have made that play if it wasn't for the pressure and the horrendous heckling she was receiving from the opposing team on the sideline. You know, she's having a tough time out there today. So now with two outs... I didn't even see what happened right there. It was I was a looking down. Weak little pop up, short stop with a grab. All right, so pop up to short. That retires the side. No runs, no hits. One runner left on. Still 2 1 going to the bottom of the fourth inning. Shaq Daddy will step back up to the plate. Ty, have you ever won an uh, intramural championship here? I've not won an intramural championship, but I do have several intramural championship t shirts. Pays to know the right people. It's true. It's true. We get a little break in the action right now. A little bit of confusion. This game was going just flying by as we were in the bottom of the fourth inning and only been playing for about 25 minutes, but they're taking a, a brief break going into the bottom of the fourth inning, and here we are underway. First pitch, not a good one, but called strike one by the umpire. I have to say, Robbie, this umpire has the widest strike zone I have ever seen. That's true. Literally every single pitch has been called a strike. Oh, one delivery, and he's going to swing and hit a little roller over to short. Fumbles the ball, and that's going to get away. And that looks a lot like what we just saw in the top of the inning as the ball rolls out of play beyond the Bambino. It was probably her Red Sox fandom that kept her from being able to field that ball cleanly. Maybe, you know, 86 years from now she'll be able to, to play well. As he will advance to second base on the error. That's kind of a low blow tie. Not sure what you're talking about. <laughs> oh, here we go. Her nickname is Bambino. What do you expect? Lucas Santra We're steps back up. And I would show you an instant replay, but we don't have those capabilities. The last time he was up, he destroyed a pitch. That one he hit very well on the nose. But it's just going to be a base hit. And he's actually going to try to stretch it for two. It will score the run and will be a double. Great awareness by Santra showing off his speed and coming on to second. And what you I would have thought would just be a base hit. But so far, he is the MVP of this game, having driven in two of Shaq Daddy's three runs. Now Hannah steps to the plate, and she's going to soft wow, roll that ball. Is over to short, fielded and tossed over to the Bambino, but I believe she was safe. And Santra takes off again, no one, showing his base running No one's running coming acumen. the plate right No here. one covers the plate. He comes all the way in to score on an error by, once again, the Bambino. You know, that's just unacceptable. I have a catcher at this point in the game. So that's going to be a base hit right there, but Santra comes in to score on the error. Oh, they're calling her. Are they calling her? Uh, nope. We've got a little confusion on the field right now. The umpire's calling her safe. And this is big right here. Connor Schilling is calling his shot. He has pointed out to the field. You got to wonder what Amanda's thinking over there. She's 
She's the Bambino, but he's trying to take a page from it. And he drills it right to where he pointed, just not quite as far as he was necessarily expecting. It's going to be a base hit, and he's going to take off and try to go second, try to get into a rundown. Oh, and sure enough, he's in a rundown. Hannah hasn't home. quite picked it up, and she comes home. That the toss to the plate, and what is the umpire going to call it? I say she was safe. Wow. And once again, the Bambino was central to that play. As soon as you brought up her Red Sox fandom, every play she's been involved in has led to just disaster for her team. I still blame the bad strategy. They haven't had a catcher out there. So Hannah comes in to score, and Connor advances all the way to second on the base hit. You know, the gentleman's club is just playing absolutely sloppy. Rice steps there. back up and just pops it up to second base. The catch is made. There's a crazy charge by Taco Bell out there, and he actually lost his cap. Not sure what he was getting so excited about. That's classic Taco Bell right there. And that is the first out of the inning. Slamming Sammy Benner steps to the plate now, pops one right up to sh third base. Out number two. Now, what do you think Arvid's feeling right now? I mean, and now we've lead. lost. <laughs> they have lost a player. Arvid has moved up one spot in the order. Is Jordan is gone? He he's just left. And Arvid's going to line one into right field, opposite field stroke, and that's something you like to see. He might be coming out of his slump right there. RBI base hit right his, there. His team's giving a round of applause for that base hit right there, man. And why not? That is the fourth run of the inning. Puts Shaq Daddy up 6-1 as he gets the opposite field stroke and the run batted in. And it looks like is Lucy gone as well? Because Lucy is supposed to be next in the batting order, and she is clearly not batting. So we're wondering what happened to Lucy, who should be batting next. We're thinking Lucy should be standing at the plate. Kind of confused why Lucy is not standing at the plate right now. As Kai instead grounds out to third base. Kamish, this is something else you've got to get on. Batting you know, out of order. We've got to look into this in the offseason. You've got to wonder if this will disqualify what could be a championship victory right here. Is their batting out of order skipping the last hitter in their lineup? You know, we've definitely got to look into the rule book after this game because that shouldn't happen. At that this should point not the happen. It's, it's one thing for Jordan to just leave and they skip him. That's understandable. Kids got class. You know, sometimes, yeah, come on, sometimes it's a championship people, I, I agree, but come you know, on. sometimes people don't really understand and get their priorities right, and they think that other things like finals and graduation and success in real life is more important than an in, in intramural softball championship. I mean, hey, it is not a t-shirt. It is a trophy. It is a trophy. Don't get caught wearing that around campus because you will get in trouble for not wearing clothes. First pitch is going to be a hard little ground ball over to short, toss to first, and almost gets away from Caitlin Smith. Is You know she's feeling the pressure over there. She's able to hold on, though, for out number one. She had a good reach out there. That was, that was high, but... Taco steps to the plate now, and he's going to hit a little just tomahawk a chopper to shortstop. It's going to bounce off the glove. That will be an error on the shortstop, and he reaches base for the first time today. What type of swing was that? Tomahawk. Yeah. Man. He just hacked at that, and it shouldn't have worked. It should have been an out. No. But it works out. Now Luke will step to the plate. Luke Scrub Hodson, and he's going to drill a base hit into left field hard That's line drive. Alan Taco Bell is pretty dangerous on the base path. He's, he's got some pretty good wheels out there. And that brings Becca Smalls Holtgertz back up. No, it doesn't. She has also left. And somehow we're get oh, we get Amanda Hall stepping back to the plate. Bambino, and she takes strike one because of the rule that you have to have a female bat every third batter. And she's going to pop that one up, and you know it's just the curse of the Bambino coming back. That's easy catch made in left center field. So two down now and runners at first and second, and they need to take advantage of this opportunity.